say welcome to Chael Sonnen back to the program. Um, actually, this is just trying to catch up and see where Chael is at. It's been uh, uh, it's been about three months since the last time we spoke. At least I say that's right. right. Yeah. About three months. So you had a little bit of a, uh, uh, what, what, did they, what did you call it? What was your thing you just had? Hand, hand foot, mouth, which uh, is like what little kids get, but I got it. And, it, oh, man, it was it was a mess. But can, do you hear me okay? I'm pulling out a headset. All right, I'm going to plug in anyway, but continue. There are, so if little kids get it, how the hell did you get it? Like it, you know, I got a little. I got a little guy. He didn't have it though, so, so I don't know. But I got a little guy, so I, I'm I'm exposed to whatever they're exposed to. And I had I had different opinions. One doctor goes, "Hey, I think it's just strep throat." But it, all I can tell you is it was freaking painful. My throat was like closing. I lost a bunch of weight. That was a good. You couldn't eat. You know, I, we're only talking. There's only like a three or four day deal. But it was it was it was a rough three or four days, man. And what kind of medication they put you on for it? Cephalexin. You know, your typical, most basic antibiotic they do. But, uh, yeah, cephalexin. I was breaking out. I had, like, sores that were breaking out. I, I, I still got one on my face, but I, I have a couple more on my hand. Yeah, I was just – I don't even know what to say. I, I guess it's going around. But uh, it was a mess. Yeah, it kind of looked like chicken. It didn't itch. I didn't have any, like, discomfort from that. I, it was, you know, just a super advanced sore throat. I mean, you know, boo-hoo, I can toughen up. But I didn't know what it was. That was the thing. Go, Man, I don't even know what I've got here. I, I think it is contagious. They didn't, they didn't catch it. But, uh, yeah, man, I was kind of quarantined. I was, I was in a room alone tr- trying to stay away from everybody. I'm sure I have way more exciting things to t- but that's what I've been dealing with. If you ask what I've been up to, I mean, I, sorry, everybody, I got sick. What can I say? Yeah, who the hell gets hand, foot, mouth? Yeah, exactly. Hey, are you following the junior trials? We always do a little amateur wrestling talk. Oh, man. Who's that one kid out of... Uh... Not Azerbaijan, but some random, random country, some random former Soviet bloc country that's just crushing people again. I know who you're talking about, and I also can't can't pronounce it. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's crazy. And then it, you know, if you fast forward to next year, so Imar just put out a tweet that he is going to go 165. That was a pretty. That was like the the worst kept secret in wrestling, but he did make it official. Well, then you've got this Mark Hall, who might be the be- the best high school wrestler. To ever exist, he might be. Um, he's coming in as a true friend. They're going to match him up. I, I know Kale. Kale hasn't said it. I know him well enough. He's 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 going to put that match together. That's going to be the biggest match the NCAA has. That's going to be the the new Gwiz uh, Schneider of of next year. And and how do you see it playing out though? I mean, right right now, if they were to do it right now, how do you see it playing out? Right. <laughs> right. If it's freestyle, Mark Hall wins. If it's collegiate, I mean, how do you count out Imar? He's never lost. You know, I'm not. Of course, he has that null. I'm not even counting null. If he was sick as a dog, avenged it twice. He's never. He's never been beaten. I, I, and and with that said, it still might be Hall. I'm just. I'm gonna take Imar, but uh, it's it's a mess, man. It, and and Imar's not backing down. I'll tell you that right now. He's not backing down from anybody. So. You've seen the recruiting classes. You kind of know. We we all kind of know that the the true freshmen that they're going to be competing. We also know the true freshmen are going to be redshirted out and not be able to make it into the collegiate. Not, not for that first year, making the collegiate scene. How do you see the final three breaking down as far as team scores go at the NCAs in a year from now? Like, how do you see that whole thing breaking down? Well, ten months from now. <sighs> North Carolina State got ranked number one recruiting class. I don't know that I totally agree. They they got and then Oklahoma State got ranked number twelve, and I don't know that I totally agree with that. I think that I, I don't know. You know, you look at those guys. There's a bunch of hammers, and then John Smith. In fairness, didn't need a recruiting class. Uh, he didn't need to be number one, two, or three. He's got a barn full of guys. Right after that all ended, he released two of them. He released uh, Marsteller, who is a four time uh, PA state champion, and he released this kid named Bees, who you might not might not have heard of, uh, but he was a Fargo champion as well out of South Dakota. Um, he cut them both loose. So 
I don't know. It's a mess. And then to bring up your, uh, you know, your part, the Sooners, look, I don't know what's going on there, but everyone's jumping ship. Uh, Andrew Howe just announced that he's out of there. The rumor is that Mark Cody is going to be getting replaced. Um, I don't know. I don't know how strongly I believe that, but there's got to be a reason that Howe left. You know, Howe was his right hand man and he bailed the Northwest. Something's going on out there at Oklahoma. Yeah, and it's tough to find out. Like I've been reaching out, you know, even to Danny Rubenstein, who still is really close in with the Sooner guys, and and I'm not getting an answer from him whether or not he knows or not. I don't know, but it's like we just don't know what's happening over there, and that's the problem with collegiate wrestling. You're gonna have a great establishment, minus the guys like Kale and like John Smith. Like those guys aren't going anywhere. No matter what happens, they're gonna have five losing seasons. They're not gonna get rid of them because they always know they could be national champions again. But a lot of other places are striving to get that stuff they had in the in the 80s and 90s, those coaches are on a chopping block every year. Like, you've got they to win, are. you've got to get better, you've got to, and if you're losing losing guys, you know. Yeah, nobody's safe, Not and not even Kevin Jackson. I think Jackson did preserve himself for a little bit, but, you know, if you, if you just study the heritage of Iowa State, man, they're not playing games out there. And, yeah, it's really tough. Jim Zaleski won three national championships and, and had – uh, beyond a, a bad year, Iowa pretends it never even happened. It was so bad. And I'll remind you, he finished ninth in the country. And they were so disgusted, they got rid of him. Three-time national champion, and he was ninth. People strive their whole life to be ninth. And it got him cut. So, uh, yeah, man, there's some schools where they're, where they're not fooling around. And I'll tell you this, nothing happens in Oklahoma that doesn't go through Danny Rubenstein. So whatever the answer is, Rubenstein knows whether he's playing it close to the best or not. But if he tips you off, please let me know. And then I'll bury it. If you needed to seek, I'll bury it. But I, I like, I got to know. Yeah, and it's, it's driving me crazy too over here because you see everything on, on uh, like Twitter. You see the rumors coming out. You're reading through all the, all the posts. You're like, there's something going on, but none of it's, it's not, the puzzle pieces are too far apart. They're not coming together getting messed yet. So I'm not sure what the hell's happening. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. I agree. But the Andrew Howe thing's a big tell. I mean, you know, it's a big tell. Nobody's cutting him. People are after him. And he, he's not a guy that's going to want to leave Norman. I mean, there had to be there had to be something going on there. But at any rate, I, I hope that Cody said Cody's a hell of a coach. But he in fairness, you know, he has stumbled a little bit when they brought him in. Just to remind you, he came out of American University. He was fifth in the country for America. That's crazy. American University, fifth in the country. That's crazy. He was fifth and he was voted uh, coach of the year so he came in with it's you know it's like anything anything that's red hot can only cool off and I think that's a little bit to what's going on here you know Cody's still doing a hell of a job he had a national champion in Brewer two years ago but at Oklahoma it doesn't take much and, then, and then you gotta remember too that during that process Sammy Henson was applying for the same job that Cody got and Henson was there as the head assistant underneath Jack Spates and thought he was going to get it like I'm already here it's easy transfer the head coach wants to retire I can take over. It's not a big deal. Uh, and he got passed over for Cody. So, you know, Sammy's like, okay, is Cody out? Is Cody in? It's, you know, because cause Sammy loves Norman, wants to get back. You know, it's, but it's always an issue. Like, these, these coaching positions up there, nothing's safe, man. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like the old days of fighting when you're just hunting for a fight. You're looking. You're at one fight, and you're already recruiting, trying to talk to the promoter for the next fight. You know, the next fight. Yep. Yeah. And you remember those days in the UFC? I mean, that was right. That was right through. You know, when you were making your run, if you if you lost a fight, you might be out. There was no you could lose three fights. That you know you could you could have a fourth before you got cut. It, you, you lose one fight, you're out. And if you're not out, you're at least not on the main card anymore. You know, it was that it was that cutthroat, which. I, I don't like. I like that those days are gone. You know, a guy ought to be able to go put it on the line. And if he comes up a little bit short, still stay employed. You know, that's what competition is. Somebody's got to go down. But, yeah, it's tough. It's tough, particularly at the schools that we're talking about, the Oklahomas, the Iowa States. It's tough. You know, and now North Carolina's coming out of nowhere. They did not – this is a travesty. They did not give Pat Papalizio uh, Coach of the Year for everything he did. No, beat Iowa on the road, beat Oklahoma State on the road finished number six in the country they did not give him coach of the year which is wrong i know it makes no sense to me either like it's very confusing how they would even try to not give it to him because he did such a good job over there and and a program that historically is kind of shitty i mean let's be honest he took a a program that's usually kind of bad makes him great and and beats a lot of guys on the road that are that are virtually unstoppable with any other program and like oh by the way you're not coach of the year right 
what more do you have to do? And, you know, sometimes they just pass that around. It's like this nice thing. You give it to this guy and then you give it to the, and nobody really cares except the guy getting it. This year, it, it really mattered. And this year is the one year that it wasn't, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole bunch of guys you could give it to. It was Papa Lizio. It was Papa Lizio. He was coach of the year. I mean, it, come on. Ridiculous. So talking about uh, wrestling, let's move into submission. Um, what's going on with you <laughs> and your, and your new little submission game you got going on? Okay, so you know, look, this wasn't rocket science. You know, we didn't we didn't reinvent a, a new iPhone here. We just took grappling. I, I can, my own perspective on this. I retired from MMA and I kept grappling. I kept wanting to compete in grappling. I had some really great experiences. And the one thing I found, Frank, is there was nowhere to do it. I couldn't. There was nowhere to get competitions. I said yes to everything that came up and. You, Per capita, my phone rang a lot of times, but there just wasn't very, very many opportunities. I did the last Meta Morris. That was May of of last year. So what, about 13 months ago. And uh, there was just no opportunities. And we just I just I just called up Martin over at Flow Wrestling. I just said, look, you guys are getting into the grappling business. Let's just create an environment, man. There's a lot of guys like me that need somewhere to compete. These gyms are full. There's limited opportunity. Even Abu Dhabi, what a great event, but it comes along once every two years. It's tough to get into. So let's just create an environment and give these guys a chance to wrestle. They have a platform. They've got a huge subscriber base. Uh, and that's one thing that guys like you and I do. Everybody needs something, right? We need a little attention. We, we, need, we need our friends to be able to watch. We need to be able to put those big matches and a good production together. That was really it. Martin's like, look, all, all that we're about over here is finding out who the best in the world is. If you can put a, a architecture in place so that best guy, wherever he sits, whatever gym he's in that can't get his notoriety can get it, I'll do it. Call me back when, when you have that plan in mind. It's like, Martin, that's really not that hard to do, man. That's what the Olympics do, too. You don't make it invite. You don't You don't put anything on it. You just build the environment. The best guy always raises his hand and says, I'll do it. You know, there's never been a gold medal in the Olympic Games put around someone's neck. In the history of time, where some dude sitting with his friend at his house going, I could have done that. I just, I just didn't want to go to the Olympics this year. The right guy always raises his hand. And I told Martin that. I go, look, it's just real simple. Let, let's create an environment. And let, let's let the guys figure it out from there. And so, you know, it's flow. They do everything right. They've dumped a ton of money into it. They're doing all the high definition. You lay out all the, you know, you know the way flow does it. They're going to just bring all of that to grappling. It's no, nothing more than that. I'm as, as cheap as they come. And flow wrestling gets me every month. And now with flow combat sports, I mean, it's like, it's, it's you're getting to see. And, you know, for for the combat sports, unfortunately, it's like a lot of East Coast, a lot of smaller stuff. Like, you know, folks, I'm not going to see over on the West side. Like, I'm not going to see those guys. So it's good for me to watch those those events. When it comes to flow wrestling, you're getting every major match, every major matchup, every major. You're like, it makes it makes no sense not to have it. Like, you got to, if you like grappling, if, if you're just a, all you've ever done is BJJ, you need to get flow wrestling too, because that is really the basis of like, how you going to get to the ground? Well, we're going to show you how you get to the ground and what happens once you're on the ground. You know, it, it's, right. just, it's incredible, like, what, what Flo is doing. And how they're doing it, I have no idea. You know better than I do, especially now with uh, Front Row Brian has is, is moved over there and, and, and doing some editing stuff. And, of course, you got the, uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Bonner is over there, yep. too, now. So it's like they're snatching guys up and making things happen. And it's incredible. I'm glad it, that's your format. That's your viewing format. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. And see, I, I, I'm the same way. It's like – I'll put my time and effort into it. I'm passionate about it. It's fun for me. You know, you're doing some matchmaking and working on some size of it. But you have to have the right partner. It's, I mean, it, there's a recipe for success, and there's also a re- you can have really great things that fail. They're the right partner. They get it. They're going to do the behind the scenes. You're going to see everything, right? They're content junkies. If a guy's over there warming up in the corner, they got a camera on him. It's this little small stuff. But when you get these fans like you and I and all the people that are, that are watching it. We care. We want to see how he's warming up. We want to see what he ate for breakfast that day. We want to be behind the scenes. That's where flow really comes in, man. They get it. The bottom line is they have a camera and they put it out there. Again, it's not rocket science. It's just effort. They put the effort in. It's as simple as that. So when is your first grappling matchup going to be? What, for, yes. Yes. So, yeah, so I'll tell you about the card. It's July 17th, the main event. Um the main event is going to be Jake Shields, Benson Henderson. 
uh, which is crazy for a lot of reasons. A lot of different reasons. Plus, you got a World Series of Fighting guy versus a Bellator guy. You get these. You, you get it. Benson versus Jake Shields is pretty damn big. King Mo is going to take on Vinny Magliens, uh in the co-main event. You're going to love this. Here, get ready for this one. Fabiano Scherner, that's that's actually my coach. He's a Noguera black belt. He's got something crazy. I can't remember what it is, but he's had like 500 grappling matches, and he's only lost five of them. Whatever his record is, it's and five, whether it's 400 and 600, something crazy. He's going to get ready for He's going to take on Rico Rodriguez, as in the Rico Rodriguez. Every time I tell someone Rico Rodriguez, they, all, they always go, hey, that's the name of a former UFC champion. No, that's who I'm talking about, the Rico Rodriguez. Is that interesting? or Yeah, that's pretty compelling. I haven't heard uh, anything about Rico in years. Like Last I heard, he was living down in New Orleans or, or some, some crazy shit like that. Now he, he's back in the grappling circuit again. He's out in New Jersey. He's a personal trainer by trade, so he's in shape. And then he got back into grappling a few years ago, just hitting the gyms, trying to stay in shape, starting to share his – one of those type deals. And all of a sudden, yeah, he's back competing. And, and who knows how far that's going to go. I mean, that was one tough son of a bitch that all of a sudden just, just rode off into the sunset one day. No real official retirement, no real nothing. And everybody always asks you, what's Rico up to? Well, this is what Rico's up to, man. He's he's coming back, and how far that goes, I can only speculate. I personally hope I personally hope we see him fight again, but you know we'll have to talk to him. We got a matchup between a uh, uh, Philippe Santos versus Kenny Florian. That match actually happened four weeks ago on a whim. Kenny was back home on the East Coast. He pops into a tournament, uh, which he was uh, of course expected to walk through. He gets beat. Now, Kenny had some controversy with the rules. There was a point system. He took the guys back. He had his hooks in. He thought that four points should have been awarded. Philippe looked at that and goes, hey, you've been gone too long. The, the rules, you're misunderstanding them. That was scored correctly, and I beat you. Um, so now these guys are going to rematch. They're going to do it over in flow. Uh, and then we got Jens Pulver is going to come in against a guy named Nathan Orchard. Nathan Orchard's been lighting up the jiu-jitsu scene. The backstory there that a lot of people don't know, Jens is actually from Oregon. If you read his book, he, he was born and raised in Tillamook, Oregon. Nathan is from Oregon. So th there's a, kind of this home turf battle going on. We call Jens up and say, hey, this guy wants to take you on, and he's from the area. And all of a sudden, you know, the feathers come out. Oh, really? A guy from my own area thinks that he – so – all hell broke loose on that one too, but uh, you got to wait for Flo to tell the story. They got a story for all, each one of these fights has a story, but they're gonna tell it, man. I, I don't have to promote anything. Portland, Oregon, the Roseland Theater, uh, J July seventeenth. Yeah, but it'll be it'll be live and free on Flo. I mean, this isn't they're not selling pay per view models or anything. If you're if you're a member at Flo, you law you know how it works, man. You get everything. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, these guys are pretty excited, too. And there's an entire undercard on top of that. Uh, and then the little bells and whistles. You know, Bruce Buffer's coming out to announce it. TJ DeSantis, Nate Quarry are going to be working the mic along with me. Um, yeah, man, it's it's pretty cool. There's some good excitement going on. For grappling, you know, grappling can use it. Grappling can use a shot in the arm. What's the what's the pay like for these, for these athletes? Every one of these guys, every one of them is going to be treated the exact same. Everybody gets their, their airfare covered, their hotels. Everybody literally, literally is competing for nothing, for the love of the sport. Every single one of them has come forward and gone, just give us a place to wrestle, and we want to figure out who the best is. There's no draws. That's the other thing that's compelling about this. I've done a couple of grappling matches, and we always had a default button that was a draw. If time ran out and there was no... Uh, no submit. There was no point system in this other stuff. This is EBI rules. EBI rules. They go into an overtime. It's kind of like what you'd relate to for a collegiate, where you go into the parterre and you figure it out. They go into an overtime. Somebody wins and somebody loses. There will be no draw. Nice. So you get these kind of guys that are putting it on the line. They're, forget about the money. Forget about the. I think I can beat that guy. Well, I think I can beat that guy. Great. Then let's have the match. And you get it. As a wrestler, you and I, that's, this is what we grew up doing. But in grappling, sometimes you got to bribe a guy or bait. Forget all of that. Forget all of that. This is the environment. Do you want it or not? If you make it very clear from the very beginning, we will give you per diem, we'll give you a hotel room, and we'll give you a flight in, and that's all you're getting. And we'll get you transportation to and from every place you need to be at. But that's it. I guarantee you more guys are going to show up because now it's not that whole thing. Well, hold on a second, man. You know, you paid Benson $25,000 and you paid Jake 
twenty six thousand dollars, and you're only going to offer me five thousand. What the hell is that all about? Like, look, man, everyone does it for free. You're doing it for the love of competition, and that is it. Okay, I'm in. Like, it's so much easier. There's no all the ego can come out of it. Well, and that's where it's at. It's like, look, you, you either want to do it or you don't, and, and there is no wrong answer. But again, there's never been a gold medal put around a guy's neck in an Olympic Games where somebody's sitting around going, well, I could have done it. They just didn't. X, Y, and Z didn't come together. Look, the right guy always says, put me in. And we got more guys. You know, we're already working on card number two. I mean, I'll insert myself. I, I'm going to be wrestling Tim Kennedy uh, on the second show. Uh, Carlos Condon has showed some interest. Just got to get some things to match up. Babalu was one of the first guys. Here, I'll, I'll give you a matchup that uh, that we had and ended up not working out. Babalu versus Jake Herbert. Now, Jake Herbert is getting married and was going to fly in from his wedding shower in time to wrestle Babalu. And he's like, look, too, can we just do it a different date? I got a hold of Babalu and Babalu. Yes, absolutely. But, I mean, these are the kind of guys. They're, Frank, these guys want to wrestle. And if they don't, that's okay, too. But what we're looking for is the guys that want to wrestle. How many of these are you going to throw a year, do you think? We're going to do the, – we have a three-fight commitment right now, and the, it's a domino effect, right? When you have your first event, you got to have your second one ready to promote with the on sale and, and let your audience and everything know. So this year, uh, calendar year, there will be two. In the next 12 months, they'll probably uh, be four to five. We're going to try to do them every two to three months, but we only have three booked. And, you know, you still got to worry about, too, where, like you said, Babalu versus Herbert was going to happen. Now, it didn't happen, so, and you're going to have a lot of that happening where – Scheduling conflicts and, and guys, look, yeah. I'm sorry, I got I got a call, I got a call in by World Series of Fighting. I got a fight coming up. I can't I can't do it now yeah. because I got this fight coming up. And contracts, can I do it? Can I not do it? You know, depending on who the organization they're with, like it's a whole it's a whole thing, man. But man, I love this, man. I'm I'm excited. I'm actually really excited about this thing coming together. I appreciate that. And you are right. Yeah, there's going to be all those headaches on our end. Those guys don't have to worry about it. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. But that's just the way it goes. You know, things change. It, things change and, and you work with it. But I was pretty excited for the Babalu versus Herbert match. You know, that is pretty compelling. What a, that's a pretty interesting match. And I don't know if Jake has enough time between now and, and, and July to learn what he would need to learn to stop Babalu. It's pr- that's a hard that's a hard welcome into the business that's right, right there. That's that's you have to get ten years of learning in about six weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Know? That's right. You know, Bob, but yeah, Bob, Babalu doesn't play around, man. At all, yeah. Well, Chad, thanks so much for coming out with me today, man. I appreciate. What? It. Whoa! What? I just got here. What do you I mean, mean? Thanks for dude, coming. Hey, man. It's, our deal is hey. our deal is is always ten to twelve minutes because that's you're so busy, and now we're already at twenty four minutes. We just started. Hey, if you want to know something else, Frank, all we've done, nobody likes wrestling except you and I. we got to give the fans something right now, okay? We just bored everybody. Hey, let me ask you something. I was going to, I was going to, I'll, I'll just ask you now. Can you do my podcast uh, this Wednesday? What time? Um, let's see here. Wednesday, we'll record at uh, 11 o'clock Pacific time. I'll send you all of this in a text. Yeah, I can do it. Yep, text me. All right, cool. No problem. Look at that. I just I just stole some of your fans. See that? That's called co-marketing right there, Frank. Or or or, or po- poaching. It's also called poaching. That's right. Hold on. I wait. I got to tell your fans a story. Let me think of something interesting because nobody gives a damn about all the the Mark Cody and Papalizio talk. Let me let me think of something going on in MMA. Here's something. This isn't breaking news, but uh, speaking of my podcast, I had Stepe Miocic on two days ago. Now. There's so many scumbags in our business, and you and I can pretend like they're all great guys because we're out here and we're, we, we bring them on as guests. But the truth is, man, there's a bunch of scumbags. So then you meet, you know, these one or two good guys that you meet. You you want to tell everybody. So so Stipe is one of these guys. I get a hold of Stipe. I can tell he's exhausted. He's totally t- – and I said – the very first thing I said to him, I said, Stipe, have you slept since you, you won the championship? He said, no. He said, I've tried a few times, but I'm just too excited. I, I, I lay down. I can't fall asleep. And he's also a fireman. You know, these firemen work crazy schedules. And now that he's the champ, I, I didn't know how all that works. So I said, you know, what's up with the fire department? Have you gotten uh, some leave or how's that work? And he said, no, I have to be in there tomorrow. And I go, you're working tomorrow. The heavyweight champ of the world, you're reporting tomorrow. He goes, yeah, I'm on the schedule tomorrow. Just a regular dude leading a regular life that happens to be the baddest man on the planet. And will not quit. Like He's like, I'm not quitting. Like I'm a, I'm a fireman. Like my, jo- my job is to rescue people and save lives. This is like, yeah, we think it's about getting kids out of trees. Like, that's, like he goes, no, I'm about saving lives and being part of the greater good. I just happen to be an athlete as well that, that won the heavyweight title. 
So now, yeah. now in my interviews, I go, hey, are you finally at the position where you are now a full-time fighter and don't have to do your regular job because you're making enough money to survive? Stipe has been there for years. I didn't realize that he has made enough money from fighting. Well, he could have not been a fireman. He just will not stop. He's like, I just won't give it up. It's my, it's my thing. What a great yeah. guy. What a great guy. Oh, it's incredible. You know, he's a guy that just loves his city. He just loves Cleveland. He's a regular guy. He's about to get married. He's with the same team, the same coaches, the same workout partners. He never drank the Kool-Aid and became too cool for school. And everybody does that. I mean, some guys that don't even mean to do it, it it just comes along with the beast. And uh, I tell you what, that fire department's going to keep him grounded. It really is because he is landlocked of, of sorts. He can't be one of these guys that's on the road living this lifestyle and going to the Hollywood party. He's got to be at work the next day. And as cool of a thing as it is, uh, you know, and the money and the, the fact that he is there for the greater good and because he loves this city, it's going to be a big part of his career. You know, being landlocked and needing to be at work and staying on that schedule you know, one you know what I'm trying to say, but that one hand is going to sc- scratch the other. It, it really is. It's going to keep him on top. And for the for the people at home that don't get it, see what happens when you're a fireman. Yeah, you're on duty for 72 hours, and sometimes it's, it's longer, depending on the shifts in the city and all that. But you're there at the firehouse the entire time. So you sleep, eat, and when a call comes in, I don't care if you just went to bed or in the middle of a workout, you get up and go. So you'll see firemen a lot of times. They'll they'll have their walkies and they'll be running up and down the street if they don't have a place to to work out inside. Because if they get a call, they have to get back. To, they have to get back to the house and take off. For a guy like Stipe, the way that he trains, it's actually kind of good because he can never really leave the training environment. Because you're just sitting at the fire hall, going, "Okay, what do I do now?" Well, I I might as well go lift weights because uh, there's nothing on TV. There's nothing else to do. We've, we've washed all the cars. We've moved all the trucks. We've restocked everything. Shit, let's just go lift weights. Okay, let me go hit the bag now. So I really think for during his athletic career for Stipe, it's going to be solid. It's going to be a great thing. I think so, too. And then those guys are a team. You know, I caught one of those prime times or countdowns or, you know, and bet wherever they were following them around. And, yeah, man, it's their little team. One of his fellow firefighters is a former wrestler champion, state champion. They go do their workouts. They hit the weights, like you said. They work out right there. When a call comes in, they go take care of business. But, you know, that's his team. He's not willing to leave his team. It's like it's like a military guy. It doesn't matter if he's wounded or not. He's going back to his unit. He's not leaving anyone out there. And I, I just think over time it's going to be a big part of the story of of his success. You know, he's not going to drink the Kool Aid. I can just tell you now, he's just not. He's gonna he's just gonna stay who he is. I don't know that that belt's going to stay around his waist forever. I mean, that's a hard division. You got Kane sitting out there. You got Overeem. That, that's been totally rejuvenated. I don't know what in the hell is going to happen. And we can't just count for doom out just because Stipe put him face down. I mean, he landed him with a punch that had that not landed, who knows what would have happened. But, uh, you know, as far as staying the course and just doing the right things, he he's going to do it. Yeah, for sure. I, I really like Stipe. I like him a lot. Unfortunately, um, the last time he lost, I did an interview with him. I think I was the only one off schedule that he did an interview with. Everybody else was part of the UFC schedule and he lost. And so he won't, he won't come back on now. He won't come back. And oh, talk really? Yeah. Yeah. So he's got a little superstition at him. And it's funny cause I hit up his manager and his manager be like, uh, yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I go, you're not going to try. Cause you know, he's not going to do it. So just tell me now he's not going to do it. And he'll laugh. Oh, okay. And hang up the phone. I'm like, okay. Right. That's the baseball player in him. That's the baseball player in him right there, man. I know. It's awesome. All right, buddy, I got to pop off now here. I got to actually take, no, my, I gotta no. take my dog to the vet. You've been blowing me off for a while. All right, I'm going to text you. I'm going to yeah. text you. We'll, we'll talk this week. Thanks, Frank. You got it, man. Talk to you soon, brother.